good morning students welcome to our video lecture today we are going to study third lesson of geography that is tides now children many a times you must have visited a sea shore or a sea beach and you must have enjoyed the tides or you must have experience the movement of the water into the sea which is coming forward and moving back again now you can see here there are two pictures which are given as figure 3.1a and figure 3.1b now children you can see in this figure 3.1a you can see there is a water which is rise up to a certain level and in figure 3.1b you can see there is a water which has gone down up to a certain level and some land form you can see there now why it happens like this even many a times when we visit a seashore what happens we experience sometimes the water is close to the coastline and sometimes the water is far away from the coastline why it happens let us study in this lesson so let's see what is given here as geographical explanation both the photographs show the same place if you stay near the coast for some time you will realize that the sea water is sometimes very close to the coast that is figure 3.1a while at other times it is far away from the coast figure 3.1b so children same thing i told you all if you have been to a seashore you must have experienced that sometimes the water is very much close to the seashore while sometimes the water is far away from the seashore we call this movement of the sea water as tides so as i said many a times you must have experienced even you must have played in that water tides and even you must have enjoyed it where the water is coming forward and again it is going behind or backward bearing a few exceptions all the coast on the earth experience tides so here what they had given bearing a few exceptions so there are some sea coast which does not experience the tides other than some of them most of all the seas are experiencing the tide high and low tides are natural phenomena now as in the photograph here in the picture we had seen that in this picture you can see the water is up to certain height here you can see and here in this picture you can see the water is gone interior and because of which you can see here this is a land form okay so the pictures are same but still the water has raised up to certain level whereas in this picture the water has gone away inside and thus it has decreased from the level and thus here you can see this is a land so this is known as a high tide and a low tide so sometimes when the water come close to the seashore that is known as high tide and when it goes away from the seashore it is known as low tide and it is a natural phenomena it is naturally happening okay as we know there is a rotation and revolution of the earth which is a natural phenomena in similar manner this high tide and low tide which is occurring in the sea is also a natural phenomena let us try to understand the scientific reason behind this natural events now here they had given some scientific reasons why it happens due to the 
movement of the earth something some changes takes place or some uh, changes occur on the earth and these are the tides are also the part of the movement of the earth occurring due to the movement of the earth so what it is let us see tides are movements of sea water occurring daily and regularly so they are occurring daily and regularly so even if it is a day time even if it is a night time even if people are visiting the seashore people do not visit the seashore or any other thing the tides which are occurring the movement of the sea water which is taking place goes on continuously and it is regularly the level of sea water changes after a specific period of time so the level of sea water as we had studied about the or we we know there is a high tide and a low tide so this level of sea water which is a high tide and a low tide it is changing after a specific period of time now what is that period of time let us see after every 12 hours and 25 minutes a cycle of high tide and low tide gets completed so what year they had given after every 12 hours and 25 minutes so after the completion of 12 hours like for example okay so here they had given after every 12 hours and uh, 25 minutes the cycle of the high tide and the low tide gets completed like for example now here what they have given 12 hours so 12 hours means for example today if it the high tide had started at 12 o'clock in the afternoon so at night 12 o'clock and 25 minutes this high tide will get completed and thus slowly there will be occurrence of low tide so again after 12 o'clock and 25 minutes after night that is midnight again the new procedure or the low tide will start which will continue till tomorrow uh, now today it has started after 12 hours and 25 minutes so then tomorrow it will extend up to uh, 12 hours and uh, near about 55 minutes so again tomorrow 12 hours and 55 minutes approximately the high tide will start so accordingly it goes on changing okay so the cycle of this high tide and low tide gets completed this regularly occurring event appears to be quite simple and natural so if we look at it it and uh, we feel that this regularly occurring event is quite simple and natural it is continuously occurring and thus we feel that it is simple and natural however it is directly related to the sun the moon and the earth and the gravitational and the centrifugal forces that interact between them so what happens here there are many things which are affect getting uh, related to this occurrence of the tide and which are they it is directly related to the sun so sun the moon and the earth not only the sun the moon and the earth but the gravitational force and the centrifugal force are also interacting between them and thus cause of all these things is making or it is uh, creating the tide so that is the cause of occurrence of tides now you might be confused here because you all know what is sun moon and the earth and even you all know what is the gravitational force you must have studied it in your lower standard about the gravitational force and what is gravitational force yes it is the force which is pulling the things which is into the interior of the earth and which is pulling all the things towards the earth okay so that is known as gravitational force but what is centrifugal force now let us study in further part we are going to get some examples and with those ex with the help of those examples we are going to study and understand what is centrifugal force i am going to explain it to you all but let us study about the 
examples which are given and by which you will be able to understand what is centrifugal force okay so here in this picture you can see there is a girl who is holding a notebook in her hand and on that notebook you can see there is a piece of a chalk okay so let us see what is given here keep a small stone or a chalk piece on your notebook and move the notebook from left to right with some force okay so here they had said <coughs> this girl what she is doing she had kept a chalk on the notebook and she is moving it from her left to right and some force is applied on that movement you all have studied in science when we apply any force on any of the object so that time it is known as the force is applied the movement occurs due to the force applied on that object okay so next one let's see what is the activity given here take water in a small container which has a handle see what happens if the container is rilled round with force rilled is to turn around many a times we have a habit or you must have seen your mother she is not doing it very fast but you must have seen your mother if she has to cool down the milk or if the water is hot so she is putting it in a vessel and she goes on rotating it in a circular manner right so same way you are also we have to do that action and we have to see we have to try to see that what happens to the thing which is present into the into that vessel the next one we are going to see fill the mix mixer jar with water and switch on the mixer observe do this under the supervision of your parents so this you are not going to do alone you have to do it under the observation of your parents the next one observe a fan and a slingshot while they are moving what is slingshot see many a times you must have seen that there are uh, that slingshots are usually used into the farm land in order to uh, go or in order to make the uh, birds go away from the farm land take half a glass of water slowly move the glass in one direction in circular fashion observe what happens to the water here you can see the boy is holding a glass of water and he is trying to move it in a circular motion okay so what happens to that water and the next one you can see observe what happen if you rill a key ring around a finger there is a girl who is holding a key ring or a key chain okay and then she is rotating it or she is uh, trying to rill it turn around it into her finger what happen let's see so what year they had given the geographical explanation let us see in all the above activities the effect of the centrifugal force is visible so what happen in all the activities there is some force which is applied and that force which is applied it is known as centrifugal force now what is centrifugal force its explanation is given further let's see the centrifugal force act in the direction opposite to the gravitational force centrifugal force means going away from the center so as we had seen many of the thing and we had observed so here you must have seen what happen the glass of the water uh, glass which is filled with the water the water is spilling out because of its round movement even here in this also you can see the keychain is rotating in that girl's hand it is moving in a circular motion if you observe a fan that also you can see which is moving in a circular motion and it is going away the wind which is which we are getting or the force which is applied it is going away from the center okay so that is known as centrifugal force 
centrifugal means going away from the center you must have experienced it too at the local fairs if you sit in a ferry's wheel your seat spins and leans outward away from the wheel this also is an effect of the centrifugal force so if you have ever sat into any of the ferry's wheel in an, any of the fair you must have experience when that wheel is going round that time your seat spins and leans outwards or even if you must have seen any of them even if you have not sat in them but you had seen any of them observed any of such ferry's wheel you must have seen that the uh, those uh, spins are and the uh, on which you are sitting okay so those spins those uh, ferry's wheels are uh, they are going outwards and they are going in a circular manner so that is it is acting against the gravitational force this is also an effect of the centrifugal force okay so this is what we had studied about the centrifugal force now next we are going to study or see about the centrifugal and the gravitational force now as you all know due to its rotation the earth gets a type of power or force now as you know when anything moves in a circular manner it is getting some power or it is getting some force in your science you have studied anything which has a movement get a force right so you are also due to the rotation the earth gets a type of power or force this force works away from the center so this force it is working away from the center it is called centrifugal force see figure 3.5 you can see here this green color figure 3.5 in which they had shown centrifugal force and gravitational force the first one you can see there is a earth they had shown where it is rotate uh, rotating the earth is rotating and that time you can see the arrows are moving outwards means what happen it is acting against the gravitational force the force is moving away from the gravitational force again you can see in the next picture in which you can see there is a north pole and the south pole here also you can see when the earth is rotating the arrows are moving outwards okay so they are acting against the gravitational force and even the third one you can see there is a north pole and the south pole and at the center they have given m and there is a g which is indicating gravitational force and c is indicating centrifugal force okay so that is what they had given their direction now let us see what they had given your explanation this force works away from the center it is called centrifugal force due to this force any object on the earth would be thrown into the space and then what happen here because of this force which is applied on the earth or because of the rotation of the earth any of the object will be thrown into the space because the centrifugal force is acting against the gravitational force what is the work of the gravitational force yes it is to pull the things towards the earth and what is the work of the centrifugal force to throw away the things away from the gravitational force okay so they both are acting in a opposite way or opposite direction however the gravitational force is working towards the center of the earth at the same time this force is many times greater than the centrifugal force but then what here it is given the gravitational force is working at the center of the earth and it is many times greater than the centrifugal force otherwise what would have happened even we human beings would have been thrown away into the space because of the centrifugal force but the gravitational force is much more stronger than the centrifugal force 
and that is why even if the earth is rotating we are still on the earth's surface we are still pulled towards the gravitational force which is there on the earth surface which is there in the interior of the earth and we get pulled towards the earth's surface hence any object on the surface of the earth remains at the place where it exist so see here they had given the explanation and thus what happen any object on the surface of the earth remains at the place where it exist so we are not thrown out into the space even if the centrifugal force is applied but the gravitational force is working or it is much more stronger than the centrifugal force and thus we human beings are getting pulled towards the earth surface so i hope you are clear with what is centrifugal and gravitational force thank you